Hi guys! Last time we learned about stationary shock waves and how to solve them. Today we're going to extend our topic to learn about moving shock waves. And as we already know, most shock waves are not stationary. So, how do we solve this problem of moving shock waves? By solving, I mean how do we predict what happens to an airflow if a shock wave passes through it at high speed? How is it going to change the flow properties, its pressure, temperature, density, and velocity? In this picture, we can see a shock wave labeled by these double red lines, moving from right to left. It's moving into region 1, a region of stationary air. If you're standing fixed on the ground in region 1, you're going to see the shock wave moving towards you at high speed. Let's label the shock speed as U sub S. Once the shock passes through region 1, it's going to change the flow properties. Let's label the region affected by the shock as region 2. The question is, how will the shock affect the airflow? Okay, let's see. First, the shock will cause the air to move as it passes through it. If I use the analogy of a mosquito net again to represent the shock, it is as if the net is sifting through the air carrying it to move with the net, but at a slower speed. The airflow is not going to move as fast as the shock itself, but it will definitely be moving in the same direction as the shock, i.e. towards the left. Second, the shock will compress the air as it passes through it. This means that the air pressure will increase together with its density and temperature as well. Now, how do we solve this problem? How fast will the air move after the shock passes through it? How do we calculate the new changes in the air properties? The strategy to solve this problem is to use the same technique to solve the stationary shock problem. And we know how to do this already. Instead of rederiving new equations to solve the moving shock problem, we simply need to somehow change the problem into a stationary shock problem. To do this, we need to change the reference frame in which we view and analyze this problem. In the second picture here, instead of us standing fixed on the ground in region 1, we need to reposition ourselves on the shock wave, moving with it at the same speed to the left. This will be our new reference frame. In this frame, we will see that the shock is not moving relative to our position. Instead, we will see that the air in region 1 is moving towards us and towards a stationary shock from left to right at the same speed u sub s but in different direction. And in this frame, we can now solve the problem as a stationary shock problem. But we need to be careful. For example, the parameters that we are going to solve will be different than the parameters in the moving shock frame. So we need to label the parameters differently. Okay then. Let's label all the new parameters with a prime symbol. Before we look at how to solve the moving shock problem, let's look at some definitions first. These terminologies are used to describe the air in the two regions before and after the shock wave. There are different ways of labeling these regions with the same meaning for the same region. So we need to be careful over these definitions and we need to get this right. Otherwise, we can easily get them mixed up, leading us to solve different problems than what we're supposed to do. I've seen so many times that students get it wrong simply because they label the regions wrongly. Okay, let's focus first on the original frame of reference, i.e. relative to the stationary air in region 1. You can see that in this picture here. In this frame, the shock is moving towards the left. Now. The air in region 1 can be labeled in three different ways. Number 1, as a region not affected by the shock. Number 2, as a region in front or ahead of the shock. And number 3, as the upstream region relative to the motion of the airflow. This last definition will make more sense when we see it from the point of view of the moving shock. In the same frame, the air in region 2 can be labeled in three different ways as well. Number 1, as a region behind the shock. Number 2, as a region affected by the shock. 
and number three as the downstream region relative to the motion of the airflow. In the moving shock frame of reference, the shock is now stationary and the air in region 1 is seen moving towards the shock. Once it crosses the shock, the air velocity drops drastically as it enters region 2. We can actually use the same terminologies as in the picture above. But I just want to focus on the top definitions here, the upstream and the downstream regions. In this quote-unquote shock frame, we can clearly see that the air is flowing from left to right, from upstream to downstream. So that's why we label the two regions as such, region 1 as the upstream region and region 2 as the downstream region. Again, I cannot overemphasize how important it is that we don't get the labeling of these two regions mixed up. If we get this labeling wrong, that's it. We will solve a different problem and we will get our answers wrong, as simple as that.